which they are submitted. If they cannot be read, they will be distributed to the board as part of our minutes. Please provide an address with any comments. Our host at our solicitor's law firm is keeping everyone but the speaker on mute. We have provided time for public comment today and asked those who want to comment to identify themselves in the chat. The host will call on people in order in which they identify themselves. We ask that you state your address for our record. All speakers will be limited to three minutes with a warning about 10 seconds prior to your time being up. Our host will mute people then to be able to unmute to move on to the next person. We ask that you submit lengthy or detailed comments via email and perhaps just provide a quick summary for the speaker. As noted, this is the first of several meetings. So if we cannot get to you today, we will make it a point of taking people we do not hear from at our next meeting. We will be terminating this meeting at 5 p.m. Our presentation today will be short. We'll be going on into more detail in later meetings. Christine Ruther, our vice chair, will be giving a quick overview of the management transition that is underway <clears throat> at the Sol Delaware County Solid Waste Authority and will bring the board up to date on conversations with the county regarding a needs assessment for the authority and the county's statutory update of its solid waste management plan. I expect Mike McNichol, if he's on board today, will give us an update on the status of the permit application process for the expansion of the landfill. Joe Crawford, our solicitor, will provide an overview of the contract and the timeline it contains for renewal. I will close our presentation with a brief descri description of our plan to reach out to Kavantha given the timeline. Comments are welcome regarding these topics. We will take public comment when we are done and we will have several meetings to follow up before this is complete. And they will of course be announced accordingly. So for, for now, I'd like to turn the floor over to Christine Ruther uh, for her uh, update as, we, as I just described. Christine. Uh, thanks, JP. Um, I'm uh, the most recent board member. I think I was appointed in, in February when uh, Mario Severa uh, stepped down after a tenure on the board. Um, what I want to talk about a little bit is just to bring you up to date on the management transition that's going on uh, at uh, the Delaware County Solid Waste Authority. Joe Vistoria, who's been our um, executive director uh, for, for or CEO, I'm not 100% sure of what his title is, uh, for, for many, many years, um, is uh, going to be stepping down. He is staying on only for purposes of seeing through the uh, process that's underway to, ex to get a, um, a permit for a landfill, an expansion of uh, the Solid Waste Authority's landfill in Berks County. Um, that is a, it's a vertical expansion. Um, it is, I think the last major impediment to that in the form of some litigation uh, with Berks County was resolved earlier this year. Uh, there is still a process that has to be completed. I'm hoping um, Mike McNichol, who was having some, I understand from email, was having some difficulty signing on, will be able to uh, update us on that. Uh, Mike is, um, has, has been sort of the chief operating officer of, of the authority and is going to be uh, stepping in to, to Joe's shoes. Uh, and I think, you know, and, and, you know, because Mike has indicated that he will most likely be uh, retiring in a couple of years as well, uh, that we will be also looking for a future uh, leader for the Solid Waste Authority. Another transition, which is important because of uh, the involvement that uh, Mike Gillen, the, the, the prior solicitor for the authority had, in the operations of the authority. Uh, it, it, the, the transition um, from him to our new solicitor, Joe Crawford, is also a really big deal. 
Um, I think it's fair to say that Joe Vastoria and Mike Gillen really um, were the brain trust for the Solid Waste Authority. And um, Mike has retired. Uh, therefore, we are um, happy to welcome Joe Crawford, who knows a lot about uh, at least certainly certain aspects of the Solid Waste Authority, uh, having handled that litigation to resolve the landfill expansion. Finally, I just so so welcome to Joe Crawford. Um, Thank you, Christine. Thank you very much. Later. Um, yeah, we're very glad he could join us. Uh, also, I just wanted to let people know that um, you know the Solid Waste Authority, like a lot of uh, the authorities and, and departments in the county, you know, had been very siloed. I think there is a real desire on the part of county council uh, and um, and the new sustainability uh, commission and chief sustainability officer at the county to work and partner with the Solid Waste Authority, uh, particularly over issues like recycling and resource recovery. Uh, it's timely that things are happening as they are because um, the county must renew under, I think it's Act 101, it's uh, solid waste management plan every 10 years. And the next update is due in 2023. We're already probably a little bit late getting that process started. But as we are looking at the Covanta contract, um, whether it should be extended, you know, renewed for any period, et cetera. We, as a board, it was suggested uh, that we do a needs assessment. And the needs assessment lo looks at the long-term needs of the authority, what our options are, what the impact is of, um, of each of those options. One certainly would be to continue to incinerate waste working with Covanta. Um, one would be to go directly to landfill, obviously, with either of those, uh, what would the impact be if we were to uh, dramatically ramp up our um, resource recovery options, potentially glass recycling, composting, and there are some options that are available that the county is was looking at anyway. So I have had some conversations with the county's chief sustainability officer, and they're very interested in partnering on that needs assessment as a way of not just informing the board about what can or should be done with the Covanta contract and what the impact would be of the different options, but also uh, getting the county a jump start on its solid waste management plan update. Uh, that those discussions are gonna be continuing. I think as you will hear when you speak to, when, when our solicitor gives you an overview of the Covanta contract, uh, timing is going to be a factor. Uh, I think we have learned that it could be a very considerable factor. And I, I know I wasn't necessarily aware of that. Um, but I will hope, I hope, I know a lot of people probably wanna to comment today. I know a lot of people have been sending in comments. We welcome your input on the needs assessment and uh, on recycling options, things like that. Uh, please, please share what thoughts you have or resources you are aware of that um, we can bring into play. And thank you. Well, uh, Christine, I did see Mike uh, on one of the one of the screens, so. Mike McNichol, can you can you just give us an update if you if you can hear me? I hope you can on the permit application. Andrew, do you see Mike and Mike McNichol? Uh, I I need to find him and unmute him. Uh, I do okay. not see him just yet. Um, hold on, just a moment. Sure. I'm sorry, do we know what his um, his screen name is or whether he's uh, he's using I, his full name, honestly, if you saw him? I, I know I saw him on one of the screens. It was M. McNichol. Oh, I see him. Mike's iPhone. Mike's okay. iPhone. Okay, I see that. Terrific. Um, and I'll, uh, Mike, I'm going to ask you to unmute um, just in just a second.
Hello? Can you hear me all right? Yes, Mike. Yes, Mike. Okay, thank you. Um, the process for the application for the expansion is completed. We are just waiting for an answer from the DEP. We expect to have an answer as early as the end of next week and certainly by the end of the month uh, at the latest, barring any complications or unforeseen problems that, that, that we don't know of at present. So basically now it's just a matter of hearing back from them. So Mike, that what you're what I what I think you're saying is we expect by the end of June that we should have the permit for the expansion. Correct. And that's a vertical expansion of the landfill. Vertical only, yes. And if we use it currently, the way we are right now, how many years would that, that provide? That would give us an additional 10 years, as you said, operating the way we do currently, uh, which would take us to about 11 and a half, 12 years total. Okay. Okay, thanks. Sure. Um, the next would be uh, Joe Crawford. He's going to give us a, an update on the uh, contract. And the well, thank, thank you, JP. And I, I just want to say to the members of the public who are participating and to the board members, uh, I very much appreciate the opportunity to work uh, with the authority and serve the authority. Uh, and uh, we are taking very seriously the comments that we've been receiving, and we're going to review them. Uh, I, I've been asked to give just a brief overview of the, to give you a brief overview of the contract between Tovana and the Delaware County Solid Waste Authority. I know that many of you from your comments are familiar with it, but in essence, what it is, it's an arrangement that's existed for over 30 years uh, under which uh, the authority has guaranteed, and it renews essentially every four or five years. We're now on a five-year cycle, as I will explain. And uh, what it does is in that contract, the authority has made a, a guarantee, a commitment to Covina that the authority would deliver at least 300,000 tons of solid waste to the Covina incinerator facility. As you know, it was previously called Westinghouse, American Refuel, uh, now, now Covina. We have the right, the authority has the right to go as high as 370,000 tons per year at a stated price, which was in the most recent contract, which was entered into four years ago, uh, $38 per ton, but it's adjusted under certain inflation factors. So that's one key part, which is that the authority has the right and the obligation under the contract to bring uh, at least $300,000, 300,000 tons of waste to the Covana facility. At the same time, under the contract, the authority has given Covana the right to deliver up to 450,000 tons of ash, the result of the incineration of the waste, 450,000 tons of waste to the authority's landfill in Berks County. And at the time that the contract was entered into four years ago, that was at a price of $18 per ton. And it also has an escalation factor. That basic arrangement has been in effect for over 30 years uh, uh, as part of the solid waste plan in Delaware County. Uh, that certainly doesn't mean it can't change. It has to be studied as everything else needs to be studied and make sure that um, we do what's in the best interest of the public. Now, th the way the timeline of the contract works is this. We are now in the last year of the contract. The termination date in the contract is April 30th of next year. So we are one year away from that. Under the contract, Covana has the right to give us a notice and they may do so now or within the next 60 days of their intention to continue to keep operating the facility. And if they do that, as we expect they will, because we expect they will continue to operate, we then have the authority then has the right, but not the obligation, has the right to uh, seek an option uh, to continue to use the Covina facility under terms that would have to be negotiated or resolved by a court over a period of the next year. We would need to, if we receive that notice under the contract, the authority would need to make a response to that notice some response 
within 60 days of receiving that notice. So we are all aware of our obligation to gather the information that will enable the board to, to decide what to do uh, with respect to the Covina contract and the fact that we need to do so quickly. Uh, I've only uh, been in my current role as solicitor for about three weeks. We know this is a high priority and we're gonna work very diligently at it. Th those were my comments, thank you. Appreciate it, Joe, thank you very much. Uh, I think Andrew, what we'll do now is open up the floor for public comment. It's 3.51. We're going to shut this down at five o'clock. So, Andrew, if you could start letting people speak, um, be mindful of the time. It's three minutes. This is not the last time we're going to have a meeting. We will have a series of meetings. Exactly when we have the next meeting, we will announce that. We do not know yet. So for, just keep that in mind that if you don't speak today, you can always use the email address that we set up for public comment and or comment at public comment at dcswa.net. So Andrew, if you would please, uh, I guess we got one in at a time. Who, who would like to speak first? Yeah, of course. Um, and I, uh, I'll try to uh, recognize uh, those of you in order. Um, a lot of you uh, requested through the chat to speak um, and that's the order I'm working on. So I, I if you would like to speak um, and you haven't already done so, I would encourage you to do so through the chat function. Um, that way we can take you in order. I see some of you have hands raised already, so I'll do my best um, to, uh, uh, to recognize you as well. Um, but uh, that being said, um, I believe the first request came from Melissa uh, Nesda in Wallingford, and I'm gonna uh, find her and unmute her, invite her to unmute. So when, um, when I do uh, recognize your name, um, I, I, I will need to unmute you and you will need to unmute yourself. So uh, look for that icon in the, Zoom, uh, in the Zoom window. Just a moment, let me find uh, the first requester. Okay, and I've requested that uh, commenter to uh, unmute. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Melissa Nedza, and I guess you guys requested my address. Um, is that true? Yes. 214 Moore Road in Wallingford. I'm a hop, skip, and a jump from Chester. I'm a resident uh, of like Wallingford. Like I said, I'm a mother of a toddler. I am here and I'm saying I'm not in support of this contract being renewed in one year. Um, I did not realize that this incinerator in Chester is the largest. Uh, so I've uh, read in the United States and um, it creates, I've been reading more air pollution and emits more particle matter than any other incinerator in this country. And that concerns me for the air quality of my Chester um, community members right over the border and for the people here where I live and for all across this area. This concerns me a lot and especially for my son. Um, I have read studies that uh, found that 38.5% of children in Chester have asthma and it, this is much higher than the national average. I am very concerned about those things. And the last thing I'll say is that um, I'm very concerned about the, um, the pollution controls that are on this incinerator as well. And um, I am not in support of the contract being renewed. Thank you so much for hearing my comments. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. Andrew, do you have your next? Yes, the next is Margaret Mansfield. Uh, so if I could just uh, give me a moment to find that person. Okay, Does and I requested that they unmute. Okay, and I think I have. Thanks very much. Margaret Mansfield, 2407 Seacane Road in Seacane, Ridley, Pennsylvania, with a commissioner on this board. Um, managing our solid waste stream 
responsibly should be the utmost importance to all Delco residents. Our health and living environment depend on it. This is only possible if the public has access to information about the work of this board. I am grateful for the recent changes to the Solid Waste Authority webpage, where there is now a phone number to contact someone, and now a public comment email. Thank you for that. Yet this past Monday, I looked in vain for confirmation of the Zoom link for this meeting, an agenda, and background information relevant to it. My thanks go to those responsible for posting the link yesterday, but it was too little, too late. It would be helpful to have more specific information about the board's, mem board's members, your meetings, minutes, budget, and vision. The webpage does say, state that your motto is a familiar one, reduce, reuse, recycle. My daily walks in the neighborhood prompt me to ask what responsibility this board takes for putting that motto into practice. The volume of trash put out twice a week is truly astonishing. I've seen six to 10 large black trash bags by many houses, usable furniture, recyclables, tree limbs, and yard waste, all put out as trash. On recycling day, I see lots of trash mixed with recyclables. In addition to all the issues we face, among them environmental racism, we're dealing with a climate crisis. We simply won't be able to do, deal with either as long as we are incinerating so much trash. So I'm led to ask, what is the plan to reduce the volume of trash in Delaware County? What is the plan to promote the, re the reuse of usable items? And what plan does the board have to develop a more effective recycling program? Chester County has an excellent resource recovery program, as do Philly and Montgomery County. Why doesn't Delaware County have one too? I asked the board. Ten to... seconds. Okay, I'll stop. Thank you very much for your comments, Margaret. Appreciate that. Andrew, please next. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to let everyone know that I posted the uh, email address again uh, in the in the chat. Um, there was a typo in the earlier uh, email address listed. So what's there now should be correct. Uh, next up is Robin Schaufler, um, who I'm asking to unmute right now. Thank you. Yes, th that's me. Uh, am I unmuted? Yes. Okay, good. So I feel it's bad enough that we're poisoning the children of Chester. Robin, can we get your address, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, my address is 21 Oberlin Avenue. Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, 19081. Thank you. And uh, I am a member of uh, the Swarthmore Boroughs EAC. Uh, and uh, the Swarthmore Boroughs EAC prompted uh, the borough to make a resolution in favor of zero waste and requesting that Delaware County also invest in a zero waste program. Uh, so, you know, I, I feel very strongly about uh, closing down Covanta. Uh, I think it's bad enough to be poisoning the children of Chester, especially given that it's a, an environmental justice zone. Um, but the poison doesn't just stay in, in Chester. It goes uh, all over Delaware County. So uh, to greater or lesser degree, we're poisoning the whole uh, county. Uh, it also counts as a dirty energy supplier. Uh, is the DVRPC counts it as an energy supplier rather than as a solid waste disposal unit. Um, and as such, uh, it interferes with our goals to uh, end climate change. Uh, and um, while I, I like this idea of more composting and recycling, I think we need greater incentives to produce less waste, especially for business. We need incentives for businesses to use less packaging, to deploy food waste to fight hunger, to promote bulk foods so that people can buy only what they need and not have to buy uh, three times as much when you know it's packaged for a family of four and you're a single person. 
to promote the redistribution of still usable items such as um, used furniture uh, and to offer more dimensions of materials recovery uh, such as the wood in furniture that is really beyond reusing or uh, uh, upholstery materials, et cetera, uh, so that they could be upcycled without necessarily going through the whole recycling process of mashing them down into their component parts. parts and, uh, you know, and then you wind up with um, uh, uh, sandals that are made from... Um, uh, reused tires. It seems to me like you could probably make better reuse of materials. So I'd really like to see a, a, a more cyclical economy rather than a use and waste economy. And that's my piece. Thank you, Robin. Thank you for your comments. You're welcome. Andrew? Yes. Um, next up, we have, uh, I believe, Zuleen Mayfield, who I'll just recognize momentarily. Okay, I've invited that, um, that person to unmute. Uh, good afternoon, thank you. Um, I'm Zuleen Mayfield, the chair of Chester Residence Concern for Quality Living, 801 Barclay Street, Chester, PA. Uh, I have a couple of housekeeping things that I would like to talk to the Solid Waste Authority about. Uh, we have requested a number of things to make uh, this hearing more accessible to people in Chester and people who do not use them. Um, I think that this process was uh, very um, confusing. We could not find information on it. We were getting conflicting information, but nevertheless, we are here to speak. Um, for our community in Delaware County as a whole. Well, the pollution that is created and generated in Chester by the incinerator, it is not stagnant. It does not remain there. And all of Delaware County is being polluted by particulate matter and, and a lot of other chemicals. And there should be no debate as to the pollutants that come out of that incinerator. Uh, we have been told that um, this authority would like to wait until the health department that is probably a year out comes out and studies this. There are enough studies that are currently out there that prove the harm that is being done to the residents of the city of Chester, of Delaware County, and, 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 and our community as a whole. So those figures and that information needs to be utilized. Um, we had also requested some input on the RFP, on the needs assessment. Um, I can tell you right now, this is not a critical need. If, if the Covant had decided tomorrow on a business decision that they would close up, they would close. And we would still have to uh, come up with ways to process our trash. But right now, Delaware County has put itself in a position to be the trash managers of New York. Philadelphia and, and, and everywhere else. You're filling up the landfill space with ash from all of these communities. On the cheap, the ash is the most toxic component, the residue that comes out of this incinerator. It's being driven up and down our streets all in through the communities of Delaware County. The trash is going to a transfer station in Marble, being trucked on our roads, tearing up our roads. But overall, the health of our communities should be forefront. It should never be a, a dollars and cents or pennies as to whether or not we're going to continue to, to kill off our communities or reduce the quality of life. So right. above all, the quality of life and people's health should be at the forefront of everybody in Delco. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you. Andrew? Okay, next up we have Alan Muller, uh, who I will invite to unmute. Um, okay, am I unmuted? Yes. 
Uh, all right. Uh, thank you. My name is Alan Muller. I represent an organization called Green Delaware that over the years has uh, followed controversies involving this garbage burner and, and your authority. Uh, we've toured the burner a couple of times. We've um, worked with uh, people in Chester. And I just have a, based on that, I have a couple of thoughts to offer you. One is that you are operating one of the most notorious examples of environmental injustice or environmental racism in the world. Um, people all over the world have probably heard of Chester more likely because of this garbage burner than for any other reason. And you all ought to truly be ashamed of yourselves for doing this. Um, Zuline and her colleagues and other people have been telling you about this and telling you you should stop doing it for decades. But when I listened to the um, earlier discussion, it seems to me that you're um, not taking seriously um, the consequences of what you are doing. And it appears that you pay lip service to reduce, re recycle, and so on. But in fact, you're simply looking at dumping and burning as the things that you take seriously. So when you look at a needs assessment here, I think you probably need to re redefine your understanding of what the needs of your community are uh, and your responsibility to that community to stop polluting and poisoning people. Um, and I, I'll just close with this thought. Um, I heard some numbers earlier it said that the authority Del Cora is delivering 300,000 to 370,000 tons per year of garbage to be burned. And Covanta is delivering or is entitled to deliver 450,000 tons per year of ash to your landfill. Now, if I understood those numbers correctly, um, you're actually accepting more ash than you are uh, disposing of garbage by this operation. Um, and since ash is usually about perhaps 20 to 30 percent of the weight of garbage, this suggests to me that you have, are in fact bringing a great deal of undesirable waste into your community. You're operating uh, Delaware County as a dump. Uh, and this is hardly something that is in the public interest. So I would suggest, and I'll shut up now, but I think you ought to uh, look very hard at the fundamentals of what you are doing and start doing something else instead. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Andrew? Yes. Um, I'll note that I'm getting a lot of uh, questions and comments in the chat. Um, Mr. Kelly, is it best if uh, folks who want to uh, comment in uh, in the chat instead email to the email address? Whatever. Um, I don't, I, the, 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 this is set aside. This meeting, this Zoom meeting, which is our first, by the way, was set aside specifically to listen to the public and and gain public comment before we move on. This is not the last one. But this is specifically set aside. So if someone's more comfortable with the email, they certainly can do that. Uh, if, and it was our intention to open the floor and listen uh, to public regarding this issue at this particular meeting. We set aside this meeting specifically for this. So uh, we have had a lot of other comments throughout. And I know Christine's had a lot through her email at the county uh, about this issue. We know that Covanta is a hot topic through the Solid Waste Authority and the moving forward and if, if and when a contract's gonna be renewed and how it's gonna be re renewed and what will it include. So this is why we set this aside specifically for, for, uh, for, this, for this topic. So whatever, if people are com comfortable with speaking right now, we encourage that. If they are not and they, re they prefer to use the public comment, that, that's fine too. And if people have questions that they've directed to the chat, can they also direct those to the public comment email? They certainly can. In fact, if yeah. there's questions, I, I would prefer and recommend that they direct that to the email so that we can, as a board, answer whatever questions they may have. We're not, 
going to start a debate or a, a period of uh, back and forth at this particular format. Um, there will be in, in subsequent meetings, there will be time for questions and answers. I see that happening easily and we should do that. So but for today, we want to we want to hear what you have to say. We want to listen to everybody's comments. Um, and the other thing, I, if you do direct comments, I am the only person who sees them. Um, so they don't do not go to the board uh, directly. Um, OK, so next I have um, uh, someone named uh, Tyler, I believe, uh, who I will invite to unmute uh, in just a moment. All right, thank you so much. Um, hi, my name is Tyler. I use he, him, and his pronouns. I'm from Swarthmore College. Um, and as a student, I have been a part of a lot of the research that has been trying to document and prove from the basis of your needs assessment, exactly why the existence of the COVID incinerator has negative health impacts and also trying to re-envision better solutions of the ways in which you can um, take care of trash and take care of trash and meet your mandate of solid waste authority. Um, but in the same line of everyone else's kinds of um, appeals here, it seems very obvious that it's that your mandate is not only the authority of, of managing waste, but also acting as a conduit of the kinds of economic and capitalistic interest of waste management that far extends outside of the, the basis of what is what you're responsible for to your citizens, your citizenry, accepting waste that comes from as far as New York and Puerto Rico, and, and really just creating a dynamic of which not the county itself, but mostly just Chester, which is a low income black um, neighborhood, it becomes a kind of locale of the of the economic stimulation of waste management. Um, and, and I think it just becomes quite obvious, not only in the way that you disseminate access to this information, but also the ways in which you are you are you are you are trying to put up this uh, this visage that you're that you care about public comment, that really you're just engaging in a racist practice without the capacity of acknowledging that you're in, uh, engaging in a racist praxis, um, and also just not having the courage to say to say that. Um, I think it's it's. I think we're now in a point where the the discussions and the controversy of how racism enacts itself in this country is over. There's no more hiding behind the idea that it could be a, a non-intentional impact, that it could be a structural impact. This is something that you're willingly choosing to do every single time that this contract is being renewed. And I think that if you critically think about where not only what people are saying here, but what the residents of Chester are saying, as well as what the information and the data objectively is showing you, then you would be more than beholden to yourself to recognize that the choices that you make are not only killing people, but is making the, the, the existence of your job harder as well as the existence of people living in your county county less desirable who wants to live in a place that is that, that is the magnet for the entire country for waste what kind of claim to fame is that what kind of economic stimulation are you prohibiting through that what kind of death are you are you propagating through that and really i think that we're kind of at the point where you should just own up and fess to the fact that you're doing this with the intentionality of racism, with the intentionality of not caring for people's lives, with the intentionality of not being concerned with how your decisions or your indecisions impacts other people and make a better decision that actually envisions strategically and politically better ways to actually manage waste. Thank you. Okay, Andrew, next. Okay. Um, next, we have someone named Beth, who I will ask to unmute now. Okay. Um, my name is Beth Fitzsimons. I live at uh, on at eight thirteen Westdale in Swarthmore, PA. And I actually had a question, um, which I put in the chat. I was a little confused in the beginning when there was a discussion about this time period that was going to ensue, a 60-day time period uh, during which the Waste Authority had to respond to um, the potential for a contract. I was a little confused. Do you just need to respond to what has been offered? Or were you saying that that, needed, that contract needed to be pushed through in 60 days? So I'll let you ask you that question, but I have to say this has been extremely educational 
I'm on this call to become more conversant with this industry. And I, I certainly agree that this is um, an, an issue of racism and it's also an issue of health. And I'm frankly kind of appalled to be learning what I am. So thank you for putting this presentation together and uh, to all the people out there who are educating me today. Yes, thank you for your comment. And regarding any questions, we'll answer them as, as a board after we after we meet and collect all the um, data questions or any, any other concerns. So keep uh, keep keep uh, in tune with the web page, and we will we will uh, address comments. Thank you, Doug. Andrew. Um, okay. Uh, I. Um... A couple of folks have asked me if I could uh, allow screen sharing. Unfortunately, I don't have that um, technological capability to do that. Um, but uh, I guess, uh, Mr. Kelly, if uh, folks want to share uh, presentations, for example, they could email it to the public comment uh, email address. Sure, absolutely. Okay, and I also I just allow. Uh, I've been I've been checking the waiting room as well, and some people have also just joined. So um, okay. uh, if, if they have comments uh, or would like to comment. Um, they can uh, send me a message in the chat with that request. Um, so next up is uh, Carol Armstrong, who I've just asked to unmute. Carol Armstrong. Okay. Um, I have Priscilla Taylor. Priscilla Taylor Williams, I believe. Yes. This is me. Am I on? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm Priscilla Taylor Williams, 308 Meadow Glen Lane, zip code media, but I live in Middletown Township. Uh, for years, the citizens of Chester have borne the health and environmental burden of the disposal of waste from Delaware County, the Philadelphia region, and beyond. It's time to take that burden seriously and to look to a more sustainable future both for health and environmental impact of greenhouse gases. I live in Middletown Township and when my son was 15 months old, as I watched him struggle for air during his first asthma attack, I had no idea my experience was being shared by other mothers just down the road. I also had no idea how much worse it was for their children. Now I know. To fully change the burden the citizens of Chester bear and to not make the same mistake again, we need to have a complete needs assessment aimed at improving our waste management processes and answering these questions. How can we best move to zero waste and maintain a healthy environment for all citizens of Delaware County? How can we efficiently and economically move to zero waste as defined by the Zero Waste International Alliance? How can we do better at resource recovery? The goal should be to become a national model, as it says on the website, um, that provides the county with an outstanding but necessary service while preserving the environment and natural resources of the future. And I will add, and the health of all our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Priscilla. Appreciate your comments. Andrew? Okay, Duncan Gromko, I believe, is next. Um, good afternoon, good, good afternoon, everyone. I, this is Duncan Gromko. I live in Philadelphia at 1210 South Clarion Street. Um, I went to undergraduate in Swarth, at Swarthmore College and graduated in 2007. Um, I think we all know that there's no way that this incinerator would ever be sited in Swarthmore or Wallingford or Seacane or any of the other wealthy um, munis municipalities in Delaware County. And there's a reason for that. We're sending our trash to Chester and burning it there and spewing it, spewing it into the air because Chester is poor and predominantly African-American. This is a textbook case of environmental racism. We're literally paying the municipality of Chester a meager amount of money 
to spew these toxins into the air, causing asthma for their children. Um, it's heartbreaking. It's the worst aspects of capitalism. And I, I really urge the, the Waste Authority to end the contract with Covanta. Thank you. Thank you, Duncan. Andrew. Ruth Bowen is next. Thank you. Andrew, can you hear Rich? Sorry. Okay. okay. My name is um, Ruth Bowen, oh, and Ruth, I actually I actually live in Chesterbrook. Um, so it's not in Delaware County, but I look at this as an area wide issue. I look at it as um, a social justice issue, an environmental justice issue. I've been following this since actually 1996. The very first film called Laid to Waste that was developed by PBS came out in 1996, identifying um, the health and environmental issues of this plant. Subsequently, uh, Temple Team um, also did a film on this and there's a video still out there on YouTube about it. I, as I look at this, I almost think of it as an issue of environmental terrorism. We are harming people and we choose year after year after year after year just to ignore it and just say, you know, we're just going to forget about it for another year or let's do another study. We know what the effects are. We know that we're hurting children. We know that we're shortening lives. Um, you know, we don't need to do more statistics. So it's just time. My reaction is, you know, I've been looking at this since 1996. It's time to stop. It's time to make a change. Thank you, Ruth. Okay. Uh, next up, we have, uh, I believe her hand is raised there. Annie, who I will invite to unmute. Okay, can I be heard? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, I guess, uh, first of all, um, I live in Delaware County and I live in the city of Chester. I'm at 1006 Highland Avenue in Chester. And uh, first I just wanna start off by thanking Delaware County Solid Waste Authority for allowing me uh, to speak here today. Sure. And um, as I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a homeowner in Chester I'm, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a divorcee. I have one son, he has a wife, and I have a couple of grandchildren, two grandchildren. And, um, and I am a member of Chester Residents Concern for Quality Living. And we want to stop the burn. And we want to work towards, uh, and, and we support the zero waste resolution. I just want to, I, I just had to bring a couple props. I hope you guys can see me, but I, I'm a gardener and this is what I have to wear outside. Can I be seen? Yeah. I have yes. to, pro, I have to protect my eyes. Uh, we have COVID now, right? And I'm wearing my KN95 mask, right? But guess what? After COVID is all over, I still have to wear my mask and I still have to wear these goggles because of the chemicals that are being released in the air from all the waste being burned can aff affects my eyes, uh, my lungs. I also have a HEPA filter uh, in the house that I carry around because of the toxins that are in the air. The trucks that are going up and down the highway, we also have noise uh, pollution. You know, I'm just so grateful to be able to get on this line today because there, um, it, it, it was very difficult. I mean, there was something written in the Delco Times, right? But for the average person, it's hard to find. I don't even know, was it strategically placed where it was placed so that people would not be able to see it? You know, also, um, 
uh, uh, if we're going to have meetings going forward, right, making it, you know, transparent so that people can access these meetings. And also, you know, there are some people, the poor working class people, um, they can't take off during the day, during working hours to attend these meetings. Why can't we have meetings in the evening time or, or, or on the weekends? Uh, we are here in Chester, right? We are, it's just, you know, our children with the asthma, you know, I'm elderly. You know, what about, what about the elderly population? What about people like myself that own our homes, right? And because of what's going on, you know, we, if we wanted to sell our homes, right, it would be very difficult. And not only that, some of us love our homes, right? We just want the environment to change. And I, like other people have said, and I just want to piggyback on them. I think this is being done intentionally, but I also want to say that we can change our minds too. We can change. We, we, if we made a bad choice in, in the past, we can correct that now. And uh, that's all I really want to say. And thank you for allowing me to be heard. Absolutely, Annie. Thank you for your comments. Andrew? Okay, we have uh, Bernard Neal Sr. Who I've asked uh, to unmute. Okay, can y'all hear me? Yes. Um, my name is Bernard D. Neal Sr. I live at 3030 West 6th Street in Chester, PA. I've always been a resident of Chester. Uh, I'm 66 years old and currently I live maybe six blocks away from Covanta. Um, and I'm for shutting it down uh, and finding a, another way to get rid of our waste. Um, my wife has asthma. Um, and, and, and really, um, you know, this is um, for the children that are, are the young children that are, are being born and are affected by um, the, the dirty air in, the, in, in this area. Um, and, and really Delaware County. So, um, it, it, I mean, the, the, the trucks that run up and down Second Street, uh, going in and out of the plant, it's, uh, and, and when they have a delay, you, you see eight, nine, 10 trucks um, in the turn lane because um, they're waiting to get in there. So um, I'm all for uh, finding another way to get rid of our waste and um, not extending the contract of, of Covanta. And on, on top of that, uh, really, there, there, there's a plan to um, redevelop the waterfront. So um, uh, it, how, how are you going to redevelop the waterfront with Covanta there? No one's going to buy property. No one's going, at least to, to redevelop, uh, put homes on, stores. Um, so um, just think about that, y'all. You, you can't redevelop the property down there with a trash incinerator down there. Um, and, and that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bernard, for your comments. Appreciate them. Okay, we have Bernetta Sweeper Kearns next. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Bernetta Sweeper Kearns. I am a resident of Chester. I live at 2504 West 4th Street. I live a matter of blocks from Coventa. I want to state that uh, one, I'm very concerned about the pollutants in the air. It's almost impossible sometimes to even breathe. I'm just a matter of blocks. Chester is the only area between Philadelphia and Delaware where we can't even use our waterway. Uh, Penn's Landing, the residents there are able to enjoy their waterway. Delaware, you can enjoy your waterway. Our front, our waterway is consumed with um, pollution. I'm a very healthy person. The only health issue I have is that I repeatedly have issues with sinusitis because of the pollutants in the air. 
this is a true case of environmental racism. To answer the young man's question, Neil, about what the plan is for Chester, yes, it is to build it up, but it's after all of the homes are recouped from the African-Americans that currently live here. I get flyers in my door daily where people wanna buy my property because there is a plan. But as long as we live here, this is the dumping ground. I agree with the other young lady about what it's happening to the infrastructure in our area. We had constantly have truck noise in the area, trucks line up on second street and even the wear and tear on the roads. So um, one of the questions that I have is it about the contract. I wanna know if there's a provision within that contract where the community has a say as to whether or not this contract should be renewed. I don't think the contract should be renewed. And I believe the community should have big input in terms of the discussions about not renewing that contract and that it is just not one board that makes that decision. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak. And I am also a member of the Concerned Citizens for Quality Living here in the city of Chester. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bernetta. Okay, we have Lou Morris next. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, Lou. My name is Lewis Morris. I am a longtime resident of Chester. I uh, presently live at 122 Thurlow Street. I am in the pathway of this facility on Thurlow Street. And I've noticed and I've, and I've watched this process for over, for, for the time it's been here, from the very first incinerator that came to this Covanta plant. I have seen particles of matter on my car that when I wash it, it's very difficult to clean it. And it's always after the combustion release. And that happens at night or early morning where no one can hear it but us. I have an 88 year old mother who lives on the same street who comes out every day and cleans the dirt from the trucks off of her porch. And these facilities know already before they even come to the site that they're going to that these garbage trucks are going to be traveling at a high volume. I have a question. If they already know that, what logic goes into making the decision to put this facility in a residential area? Most of their plants are in industrial areas, but those that aren't, what logic goes into putting them in residential areas? I just have that one question. The streets are dirty, the air is filthy, trucks drop trash from their tops, the smell is awful, especially during the up and coming times, the summer months, because they don't clean the trucks. The sulfur dioxide, the carbon monoxide, the particulate matter being emitted from that stack, we don't even know for sure the level of exposure that our people are being subjected to. I believe personally that the data that Covanta has presented to the public is falsified. And second, sir. Thank you. Lou, thanks for your comments. I appreciate it. Sure, no that. problem. Andrew. Uh, Mike. Ewall, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
Um, yes, that's correct. Um, thanks for having me. So Mikey Wall with Energy Justice Network. Um, I live in um, Philadelphia. And um, I'd just like to share some basic information about this. Um, there's been some confusion I know with some board members making claims, for example, that Cavant is not the biggest polluter in the area, that, that Delcora is more worth focusing on. Um, so I just wanna share that I've looked at the deep numbers from DEP. I know that Cavanta is the number one air polluter in Chester. And depending on what year you measure it, they're the number one in the county. If you look at the past four years combined, they're number one in the county. Their violations are not an improvement over their previous owners like they claim. They're actually almost exactly the same amount of violations per year as the previous owners. And same thing with their emissions. They're not an improvement over the previous owners like Cavanta claims. Actually, they have twice as many pollutants that got worse then got better when they took over operations of this plant. When we compare the data on their emissions to Delcora, we find that even 31%, <coughs> excuse me, if you take just the county share of the Cavanta's pollution, that 31% of the waste that is from the county, we find that is far worse on all pollutants except mercury um, than Delcora is. And they're still in total worse on mercury. Um, they're actually responsible for over half the mercury emissions in the county. Now, they're applying for a new air permit right now without putting into this air permit application that they plan or supposedly plan to have new air pollution controls like the ones that they're missing. Um, they're missing two of four common pollution control devices used at incinerators, one that reduces the nitrogen oxides that trigger asthma attacks. And they're finally thinking about putting it on, but did not put that in their application. So it's hard to take them seriously on that. Now we know they're more polluting than landfilling. And of course you send toxic ash to your own landfill from them. It makes the situation even more polluting than if you put trash straight there. And what I'm seeing is that this is really just all about money. It's not about emissions. It's not about common sense. It's not about social justice. It's about, are we afraid of shocking suburban municipalities with a jump in waste disposal bills? Well, guess what? 17% of the county's waste already goes to a landfill directly, and that's to the Fairless Landfill in Bucks County. Are those municipalities in the county that are not using the authority in Cavanta, are they paying shockingly high waste fees? I'd like a follow-up with an answer to that, because I think we really need to know that before we make claims that somehow the rest of the county is going to be shocked with a 50% increase in their waste disposal fees when we haven't even looked into finding out what those actual numbers are. Um, now, you can do an RFP, a request for proposals right now for long-term private landfill. Ten seconds, sir. Thank you. And find out what it would really cost if you had, say, a 10-year contract to bring to a private landfill, conserve the county's landfill space, and then work on the zero waste reduction methods um, after you solve the problem of getting away from the incinerator. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Excuse, excuse me. This is Joe Crawford. I just want to add something. Uh, I described the contract a little bit earlier. I just want to add that, and the authority board is going to consider all these issues. But I thought I think I should point out that all of the contracts over the years with Covana and its predecessors have included a guarantee by the county, by Delaware County. And so it is possible that the Delaware County Council will need to weigh, on, weigh in on these issues as well. I just wanted you to be aware of that. Thank you. Okay, we have Shelly Ashfield next. Hi, my name is Shelly Ashfield. I have a property at 1214 Thomas Street on, in Chester. Uh, that house is on the east side. That's on the opposite side of Chester, but the wind commonly blows from west to east. So uh, I get to see that particulate matter. It's definitely real. It covers everything every single day it's there uh it's it's no joke i would like to tell you that uh there are a good from what i am hearing uh that uh this plant is not utilizing state-of-the-art technology things like vitrification of ash uh, uh and bag houses and uh, and and the, the uh, treatment of the uh, for, uh, of the the nitrogen oxide 
uh, those things, those are technologies that are well known and they have been around since the 1980s. And that's, this is, this is a, a, a good question. Uh, and Lou had some really good points here. Uh, if you do not uh, adhere to proper procedures, uh, all of the best intentions of the world don't work very well. If you don't clean your trucks, it's really smelly. Right now, what we have with Chester is that we have a lot of wear and tear on the roads, but we have no money for the repairs of those roads. So you want to see some big potholes, we got them. Uh, you want to see uh, people that actually are taking in everybody else's trash, but the trash that only 6% of the county, you know, we have only 6% of the population of the county. We can, we're having a hard time actually handling our own waste generation. And, uh, you know, any, anybody who is living in Chester can see that every single day. That's pretty ironic. Uh, and, and part of it is because of, you know, the, the you know, the, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a problem of uh, economics. I can I can expound on that more, but I think uh, I think my time's up on here. On here. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you very much for your comments, Andrew. Who's next? We have uh, Lisa Pietras. Hi there. Um, my name's Lisa Pietras. I live at thirty four nineteen West Third Street, and I'm in trainer which is right next to Chester. We're just a little bit south. Mm -hmm. And I live about, you know, a block off of 291. And the truck noise is, is constant. It's, um, you know, I just kind of wanted to go along with what the other residents at Chester were saying about how the noise pollution and, you know, with summer coming up, it, the weather's been beautiful. I have to keep all my windows and clo doors closed because the smell is so horrible. It gets into the house. It permeates everything. 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 And, you know, I have seasonal allergies where five years ago, I didn't have seasonal allergies. I use an inhaler five years ago. I didn't use an inhaler. My mother died of lung cancer. She would live in trainer her whole life. My aunt has emphysema. She lived in trainer her whole life. And, you know, it's an industrial area. I get that. But Covanta and what I'm learning just, you know, from research and with uh, the groups who are looking into this and making us aware of it, it's, it's the biggest, it's the biggest problem. And it's awful living down here. And I just wish Delaware County would do something about it. And I wish that Covanta would, it, you know, if they're going to operate, operate ethically. I guess that's kind of all I have to say. Thank you Thank for your you. comments, Lisa. Appreciate Thanks. them. Okay. Mark Wallace. Mark. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Mark Wallace. Uh, I live at 741 Harvard Avenue in Swarthmore. I'm a professor at Swarthmore College and I just cut short uh, my last class of the semester in order to be here. So I appreciate this opportunity to speak. A previous uh, spokesperson in resistance to the Covanta facility said that a facility like this would not be planted in a Swarthmore or a Haverford or other wealthier, more affluent communities than our friends and neighbors in Chester. The Cofanta facility and its predecessors has been in Chester for 30 years. And it's long past the time when we ask friends and residents in Chester City to bear the disproportionate burden of processing all of our waste through the Covanta incinerator. When I have visited folks in the neighborhood in and around on 
on the east end of the, or the west end rather of the city in and around the incinerator. And we've heard this today, the stench from the trucks and the incinerator, people's homes, the foundations have been cracked because of the constant pressure of trucks on the roads. Rodents have worked themselves into people's foundations and basements and homes. It's an untenable, grotesque situation. It's a stunning, monstrous example of environmental racism. A under-resourced, predominantly black community has been asked again and again and again to be a toxic sacrifice zone, a kind of a killing field for the rest of the county. It's unfair and it's unjust. In that regard, the rest of the county can figure out in a zero waste plan how to reuse, how to downsize, how to treat waste at the point source from which it originates and do simple things like composting instead of dumping all of our waste and our trash in the city of Chester. A last comment, Stefan Roots has said this many times and many of you have said it today. Genuine economic development along the waterfront of the city is not going to happen with a trash incinerator, arguably the country's now largest trash incinerator operating with impunity on the waterfront. 10 seconds. Economic development should be sustainable development and sustainable development doesn't include the trash incinerator. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mark. Okay, Jennifer McCafferty. Hi, um, my name is Jennifer McCafferty. Um, I live at 2412 Chestnut Avenue in Ardmore. And um, I've recently gotten involved with um, some more environmental groups and found out about this horrible injustice going on in Chester with the incinerator. I was shocked when I found out that my trash was being burned. And just an environmental injustice and racism. Everyone I talk to now, I tell about this and everyone is shocked. A zero waste or waste reduction would be a way smarter way to, um, and more equitable way of managing the problem of our consumerism and waste. I'm extremely concerned with the health of residents in Chester. They should not be subjected to the hazards from Kavanta, a for-profit company, which needs to be shut down. Thank you. Thank you very much. Andrew, just a reminder, uh, we are gonna stop at five o'clock This and it's 4.49. So I'm just giving ample warning. Uh, Deneen Mosley. Thank you. Um, I submitted a question also to the chat, but I'm also um, to the email, but I'm also going to pose it here as well. Uh, my name is Deneen Mosley. I'm a property owner in Chester at 2011 West 7th Street in Chester. And um, I really um, wanted to share uh, with everyone how as uh, a person that was born and raised in Chester my whole entire life before recently moving um, that sometimes the smell in Chester is so bad that you can't even go outside and sit on your our oldest son who is 34 years old has asthma that he was not born with it was developed while we were residents in Chester. And my husband also developed allergies over the last 15 years. Again, that he was not born with. 
Also, I feel like um, there needs to be more transparency. So again, I did send to the email. I would like a list of all the board members um, that sit on this board that is going to make a determination or recommendation regarding renewing the contract. I also would like some history on how they were appointed and by whom. And what terms do they serve for? Are they elected or appointed? And are these paid positions? The people that live on this board, if they do not live in Chester, they should not be making the final decision on Chester residents. And I finally feel that a class action lawsuit should be brought Amen. against Atlanta for envir environmental racism. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Thank you for your comments. Okay, we have uh, Kareem. Uh, Kapolku. Hi, my name is Karim Odakan. I'm a primary care physician in Long Island. I just wanted to speak to everybody because we have Covanta here in Long Island. And, uh, you know, I'm part of a group uh, called the Brookhaven Landfill Action and Remediation Group. Covanta dumps its ash after it incinerates in North Belport, which is a predominantly minority community in Long Island that uh, has the lowest life expectancy of the 3 million people in Long Island. They operate a waste transfer station adjacent to this community. They dump millions of tons of ash into a landfill, leaking forever chemicals into the groundwater, fined by DEC and EPA for violating the Clean Air Act, offered to finance the expansion of this landfill. Uh, while the town's own anti-bias task force, uh, you know, uh, documented that this landfill was an environmental injustice. And then they have the nerve to tell us that their environmental justice policy doesn't apply to our community. Um, so I just wanna say in our experience in New York, in Long Island, is that corporate responsibility and environmental justice are not just lip service and that we stand in solidarity with the people of Chester to say that enough is enough. Thank you, Kareem. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate them. We have, uh, it, again, it's 4.52, so we probably have enough, enough time for at least two more uh, rounds of public comments. So, Andrew? Okay. Uh, Don Camerata is next. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Don Camerata, and I represent Covanta. Thank you all for the very honest uh, comments that you have provided. We take these uh, very seriously. Uh, we would agree with many of you uh, on the undue burdens that the city of Chester takes. Uh, so that's an area of agreement. Uh, but I disagree and we, Covanta disagrees with many of the statements that were made today. Uh, so what I would like to do is in my three minutes, try to make the, you know, correct the record uh, as best I can. The truth of the matter is that Covanta Chester is not the largest facility in the U.S. There are larger facilities in the U.S. Also, uh, waste energy residing in a community is not unique. Uh, there are waste energy facilities uh, all over the world, Paris, Dublin, um, Amsterdam, uh, many major cities and metropolitan areas where a waste energy facility operates uh, in, in within the city adjacent to the, the communities. Um, I heard today a concern over climate change. Uh, waste energy is a, a tool for reduction of greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases uh, are almost too, greenhouse gases from landfills uh, are exceedingly high and by incinerating your waste, turning it into clean power, uh, you at that have avoided the greenhouse gas. So it's a tool uh, that is practiced around the world uh, and in Europe uh, recently, almost in the last five years, over a hundred different facilities have uh, been constructed for that. Uh, the, the comments about Corvanta being the largest polluter in Delaware County is also not true. The data presented by those, this community uh, is, uh, extremely selective in only using industrial sources and ignoring the non-industrial sources. So this, the results are skewed. You know, for example, we talked and we've heard a lot about particulate matter. 
according, according to the EPA, Covanta particulate matter inventory is about 1% of the total where restaurants and industrial cooking represents 6%. That's a little bit different than I'm sure the impression that you've been left with. We believe all emissions from all sources should be addressed and transportation and vehicles are the, one of the largest uh, in the, uh, the and second. contributing to the uh, emissions in the area. Uh, also, there's comments about air quality. Good news is air quality in the area has been reduced, has been improving over the last 10 years in, in Knox in Chester. Time, sir. It's actually 10%, 59% lower than it is in Philadelphia. Thank you. Don, I, I appreciate your comments. And throughout the process of, of these meetings and these, and these public input meetings in particular, you're going to definitely have more time to uh, discuss the operations and, and, and have your, your floor time. Thank I you. wanted to, I really wanted to focus on the input from the residents and any other public matter, any other public person for that matter, that had any comments on this. And I'm glad that you're on so that you can hear specifically and directly exactly what the board is hearing. So you, during the series, again, let me say that you will have, you will have uh, ample time to, to address that. And then- Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for, for sitting in and listening. So with that, I, I see that it's 457. I, I will I will let at least one more comment happen and then we'll we'll um we will we'll we will shut it down. So Andrew, is there at least one more person that we can hear from? Yes, uh yes, I yes. Um next in the queue is Betsy Bolton. So I'll invite to unmute in just a second. Hello. Um, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, my name is Betsy Bolton. I live at 211 Rutgers Avenue in Swarthmore. Um, I want to underscore the comments made by my neighbors um, in Chester, who I think have been very eloquent about the burden borne. I would also, in response to what Don Camarada just said, stress that much of the vehicular traffic and associated air pollution comes from the trucks bringing trash to Covanta. Um, and so I think it's really important as we talk about selective data that we hold all sides to account. I want to thank very much Delaware County Solid Waste Authority for having this, um, this event, for letting people speak to the issues um, at play. I also would say that while landfills do in fact have um, create methane, that there are ways of tapping that methane to be used as renewable natural gas. Um, and that I think it's a little deceptive to present the burning of waste as a solution to climate change. So, um, so I, I really appreciate the fact that you're letting all of us be a part of this conversation. And I hope that calls for further transparency will also be met. Thank you very much for your time. Betsy, thank you very much for your comments. And with that, it is five o'clock, 4.59. I want to thank everybody. Uh, we, we got through quite a few people. We got through at least 23 uh, people speaking publicly and, uh, and, and, and letting us know what their concerns are. So we do not have the next meeting scheduled. We will have that scheduled probably within, I would say, a week or 10 days. We will have the next uh, meeting scheduled. And pay attention to our uh, webpage. You will be able to get that. I encourage you to use the the email that we sent out for public comment also. Uh, with that, I wanna thank everybody for being here. Thank the board members. Thank you, Joe, for setting this up at your office. Uh, this was, for us, it was a challenge. It was our first Zoom meeting and to have 170 some people on the first Zoom meeting was, was uh, quite a challenge. And I think it went very successfully. I'm glad that you guys sat here and participated and let us know what you think. And um, with that, I'm going to close the meeting and look forward to hearing from you in the very near future. So thank you. Thank you very much. Cool. Okay. We're gonna, I'm going to keep the meeting and I guess that'll be it. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Thanks again. Cool.